All right, guys, our strength today is kind of a fun, different one. Uh, it's going to be every three minutes for four rounds, you are going to do six suitcase deadlifts on each side. So a suitcase deadlift is a one-armed deadlift, depending on your strength here. And range of motion, you can play around with a kettlebell, dumbbell, or even if you run out of a weight, like if you want something heavier than our heaviest dumbbell or kettlebell, you can even do a barbell, right, which requires a little bit more stability in, in holding that and wrist strength. So, but here's what it looks like. The goal here is to try to stay stable and square as you lift it up, right, because only on one side. So it's just a deadlift from that position. As you drop back down, same thing. It should drop right next to your foot, okay? From the side, notice my hips are going to go back. Okay, if you use a dumbbell, you might notice that that range of motion is a little bit bigger than uh, just using a barbell. So there's a little bit more quads at the bottom, but same thing, don't let the back round. Okay, you're going to do six on each side. From there, um, you're going to do a 60 second reverse plank, adding weight if you can. So reverse plank is starting here, hands are shoulder width, lift your hips as high as you can, pull the shoulder blades back, squeeze the butt holding for 60 seconds. If you can hold this for 60, you're going to add a weight in the middle of the body, okay? Uh, for those of this is challenging, a way that you can make this easier is by changing the angle. So you can use a box or a bench, and then this allows you to uh, change the angle to make it a little bit easier to hold, okay? If 60 seconds is a long time, you can rest, break it up, um, but again, focus on good quality there, adding weight if needed. So that's our strength today. Let's talk about conditioning. All right, guys, for AMRAP, we or for our conditioning, we have a 12-minute AMRAP, uh, three movements. It's going to be Russian kettlebell swings, goblet squat, lunges, and pull-ups. So it's going to start off with some Russian kettlebell swings. So this is going to be a little heavier, ideally, than what you use normally, because our range of motion is shorter. So a Russian swing means we're going just to eye level. Same movement through the hips, right? Pushing the butt back, squeezing the butt at the front. Okay, going up to eye level. Really focus on trying to get the power from here versus lifting with the arms, okay? Uh, that's gonna be 16 swings. From there, you're gonna go into that goblet squat position. So there's a lot of ways you can hold it. This is how I prefer to hold it. Uh, some people like to hold the handles like this, but keep that weight on the chest. You're gonna do 10 alternating lunges on each side with that kettlebell. From there, we're gonna go to the pull-up bar and do eight pull-ups. So um, classic scales, we can always do ring rows, okay? Working on that good range of motion, changing the angle as needed, okay? We can do banded pull-ups, all right? If you're just learning, you might do strict, or you might work into some kipping, all right? Um, if you want to do jumping pull-ups, that's fine as well. Uh, for the more advanced athletes, you can do chest-to-bar pull-ups as well. So we got these three movements, 12-minute AMRAP, this will be... Again, AMRAPs are more challenging. If you're fit, you're going to be moving fast, trying to hang on, see how many rounds you can get for 12 minutes. That's it for today, guys. Let's talk about the finisher. All right, guys, our finisher today is some stretching cool-down work. So it's going to be two movements. The first is two minutes in the straddle stretch. So the straddle stretch is this position. Get your legs about 90 degrees, okay? And then we're going to hinge our hip forward, okay? So there's a lot of people that this is a very challenging stretch. They might not feel like they can go anywhere, like you're really tight. I love doing this with a partner. Adding a little extra pressure here is really helpful for just getting people to work harder. But I always have a, a stretch isn't just feeling the stretch in your muscles, but ideally by the end of that two minutes, you have seen improvement in position, okay? So use your fingers on the ground and just try to walk your fingertips forward. And as, you're, as you get that end range where you're at, do a couple things. Flex your quads. You might feel that increased tension on the inside of your thighs. Breathe, walk the fingers forward, and try to kind of move that. You can move your knees around a little bit, meaning like flex, contract, and relax. And then just keep working your chest down. Breathe through it. Try not to give up. Work hard. You should not be able to have a conversation during this part because you're just working hard for two minutes, okay? After that, we're going to do the couch stretch for two minutes on each side. I'm going to use a bench. You can also use a wall for this. I like to get a pad for my knee because you're on, on your knee for two minutes. So the way that you would set this up on a bench, is this position, okay? If you're really tight in your quad, you're gonna wanna bring your knee further away from the wall or the bench, that's gonna make it a little easier. The closer your knee gets, the more challenging it's gonna be, right? But when you're here, you're trying to keep the chest tall, squeeze your butt, you kinda open this hip and you'll feel that nice deep stretch in your quad, okay? So when you're here as well, you kinda reach up overhead, that makes it feel a little bit deeper, squeeze your glute, 
right? Relax the glute, push the hips forward, and just work on it for two minutes each side. That's it for today, guys. We'll see you tomorrow.